Hey, what's up? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers. Oh, wait, this is too small. Make that bigger. The Transformers Platinum Edition Bumblebee and Grimlock from Robots in Disguise. This cost me $20 at Toys 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 because they're shutting down, unfortunately. But I got a really good deal on this thing. It uh, normally retailed, well, at least the, the sticker on the box says that it retailed for about $70 Canadian. Not sure about the US. This was a Toys R Us exclusive, as most of the Platinum Editions were. Then it became a Toys 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 exclusive after Hasbro stopped making exclusives for Toys R Us. They weren't selling anything. And getting this thing out of the box is honestly a really big hassle. Also, one quick note, the instructions are garbage. They start in, in vehicle mode for Grimlock and they're just not fun to use. And they don't explain a lot of the things, like there are all these tabs all over Grimlock's design that um, don't do anything, so I'm pretty sure that has to do with the Takara version of the mold, because that is based off of the Takara version, because we did not get a normal release of that in North America. Bumblebee though is exactly the same, but we'll get to that in a little bit, just getting him everything out of the box. You don't get too many accessories, not a, not, not a lot for a Platinum Edition uh, figure, but yeah, it's fine. So Bumblebee comes in at around 5 inches tall or 12.7 centimeters and Grimlock is 6.5 inches or 16.51 centimeters tall. Now this review is going to be a little bit different because there's two figures in here so I'm going to shorten a little bit of their segments. I'm not going to talk about the articulation because they're the same from the figures they're based off of which have been around for ages. So yeah, but overall on Bumblebee who I'm going to start with, the detail's not that bad. I mean he's missing a lot. This is coming from someone who has another set of this figure with the repro labels on it, so it's missing quite a bit of detail. But it still looks nice overall. It does fit very well with the rest of the Robots in Disguise figures, however the color is a little weird, because this one's kind of that animated exclusive Bumblebee style gold that they used to do way back in the day. Uh, this guy has that as opposed to the normal yellow, which I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison between the two in a sec. But overall it looks pretty cool. The type of plastic on him is a little bit thinner, I think, and I think it has to do with that gold. But I don't mind the color. The color looks okay in robot mode. It looks better in vehicle mode, but I'll show you that next time. Now, the version I have that I'm going to be comparing this to in a sec has these stickers applied to it, so keep that in mind. It's not as detailed. Yeah, see here, the stickers. I put the stickers on there. The sticker sheet that you can buy for the normal version does not is not compatible with this version because the normal version stickers use that same yellow color, this one's a gold, so they're going to stand out and look very different. Now to my knowledge, this is the fourth version of this mold, because we got the original Bumblebee from Wave 1, then a repaint for the one where he came with that weird blue armor in Wave 2, and then this one, I think, was in like Wave 4, I want to say? And then we got the Platinum Edition version. So this does suffer for a little bit from mold degradation. You got the doors don't tab in very well in car mode and other stuff. But like I said, it does look nice next to the other figures. I mean, if you did, didn't have the original Bumblebee, this would look fine because you wouldn't really know the colors very well. But with this gold, it does stick out a tiny bit from the others, but it still looks nice next to them. For example, here's Strong Arm and that weird bludgeon repaint that was an Autobot for some reason. That is still my favorite warrior class figure of all time, because it's just awesome. The Megatronus mold is great. But yeah, Bumblebee's Bumblebee. You, you still can't see his door wings because his shoulders are too big and his thighs are really small and stuff. The sword on this figure though is absolutely amazing because the original one was just all that blue. I don't have it anymore, I can't find it. But this one has that really nice silver painted hilt and I really really like how that looks. He can hold his sword big surprise there but yeah he can just hold he can hold a sword yay sword uh, i kind of wish he came with his little blaster like he had in the show but oh well it is what it is now grimlock grimlock is the best part of this set grimlock is honestly amazing i hate the follow cybertron grimlock that was not a good toy whatsoever it was riddled with problems this still has those problems but it is much better than that original mold Especially when you compare it to the original Warrior class figure, this is the first run, if you notice the uh, elbows exploded. Because that was a problem with them. This Voyager is so much better than the Warrior figure. The detail and the paintwork is just awesome. The proportions are a little nicer, even though they're not super accurate, because Grimlock did have the longer arms in the show. I like the proportions on the Voyager more. This Voyager is definitely 
If you want this mold but are unsure about which version of this mold to get, this is the version you get. It fixes a lot of the problems that the normal Fall of Cybertron Grimlock mold had while adding this awesome looking, very unique Grimlock design, which is actually my favorite Grimlock design. I know I'm in the minority when I say that, but yeah. He does come with the standard Fall of Cybertron accessories, however, he, he never used them in the show, uh, so I kind of just give them to the my version of Fall of Cybertron Grimlock that I have because I didn't have the weapons, I bought it used. But you can still get them, they look very nice in this transparent yellow color. I actually kind of prefer the yellow over the red that came on the original. Now speaking of the original, this one still retains the crappy sort of foot attachments where the legs tab into the pieces of the tail, especially on the, on the right side of the screen there, that leg just does not stay tabbed in. If I put him down, he falls over. And that's my, that's my one major gripe with this figure. And that has to do, again, with mold degradation. This mold has been used very, very, very often in other figures. For example, that's the, that's the one I think that came with the Age of Extinction Optimus Prime in G1 colors in a two-pack, I think. There are so many different repaints of this Grimlock. But standing side by side, I much prefer the R.I.D. one, because the normal Grimlock is supposed to be bigger and chunkier, and he's not, so it looks weird, but with this Grimlock, it looks kind of fine, because the shoulder pads are nice and tall, and they do what they're supposed to do. And overall, it just looks nicer. He's a little bit shorter than the original Grimlock, because the original Grimlock's head and neck stem is a little bit taller. But yeah, no, I much prefer the green one over the original style Fall of Cybertron version. The articulation is the exact same. The um, range of movement in that articulation is the exact same. However, the shoulders are not ratcheted and I think that's much better because the ratchets on the original were prone to breaking because they were so stiff. And the dinosaur mode is even better. So let's get him, let's get both of these figures transformed and see them next to their originals. Bumblebee transforms just as normal, and like I said, there's some mold degradation in the doors and the way the arms transform, it's a bit stiff. Grimlock does have these tabs in the shoulders that tab into the um, torso. Don't tab those in, because if you tab them in, the legs splay out and they don't look proper. Now Bumblebee's car mode, like I said, I prefer this gold color for the car mode. The car mode looks great. I think it looks really, really good. Let's get it centered there. I think it looks really, really, really good. It's definitely a lot better plain in this color than it is plain in the normal yellow if that makes any sense the the top of the car is still a different color from the rest of it because they're painting that so that kind of looks a bit off on this particular color scheme because it's more of that yellow which kind of matches the original mold but he still fits in quite well with the rest of the warrior class line these are all the figures i have unfortunately i'd love to get some more especially thunder at, off. i'd love a thunder thing. off but yeah, he looks pretty cool in car mode. Next to the original one, again, keep in mind, stickers are applied. I like the gold color better, but you can see what I'm talking about when I say the colors of the roofs don't match. Because the roof color on the normal one kind of blends better with the roof color on this one. Because it's much different, because they have to try and match that gold. But other than that, the car mode between the two, I prefer the gold one. It just, to me, looks nice. It reminds me a lot, like I said before, of the animated Bumblebee, the Takara versions that would always come in that gold color that were really cool. Here he is next to Bisk, so you can take a look at him next to another car former. And Bisk, by the way, you need one in your life. It's not good by any means. It has a lot of problems, but it's just so stupid that it's hilarious. A friggin' sports car that turns into a lobster. Man, a lobster man. That's just really cool. <laughs> now, Grimlock. Grimlock's Dino Mode is what sold me on this figure. It's so accurate to what we see in the show, and the thick tail works for this figure, because it works for this design. Fall of Cybertron Grimlock had a thinner tail in the game, but now his tail here is so chunky because of the legs. This one actually has the thick tail in the show, so that makes total sense. The head sculpt is much nicer. It doesn't have that light-up gimmick, so you can actually pose the jaw. The only downside, at least with mine, is that the arm the left arm kind of falls off too easily, but I'll just swap the arms of these two figures around and that'll fix the problem. Uh, he's also kind of hollow, so he's great for holding your Cheez-Its. Uh, 
and next to the warrior class figure yeah no i prefer the voyager yes that is a decepticon sticker on his uh hip if you haven't seen the show you'll have no idea why that's there and if you have seen the show i'm just gonna say it right now just because i think it's unique i prefer the decepticon badges on him uh, i will be ripping the gimmick sticker off the other side to put a decepticon badge there which by the way as of this recording on july 7 july 22nd 2020 that app does not want to work i tried downloading it so many times and it just would not download and that's not like an android versus apple thing i had one of my friends who has an iphone trying to download it and it wouldn't work also overall though this set it's kind of a mixed bag because the Bumblebee on one hand is kind of a throwaway, but the Grimlock is absolutely amazing because we never got this version of the mold in North America other than this Platinum Edition. The Bumblebee, like I said, we already got that like three times, but this Grimlock makes the set. If you can get it for the price, a similar price that I paid, which was around 20 bucks, it's definitely worth it considering a Voyager in Canada costs $40. Paid, I paid deluxe, I paid cheaper than a deluxe to get this set. So yeah, Grimlock is definitely worth it. Bumblebee's okay. You can kind of just stuff them in a drawer, use them for parts. I don't know. Your toy, do whatever you want. But Grimlock is sweet. Again, though, I don't know what those random tabs on his back and his shoulders are for. I think that has to do with the tall Takara Optimus and his weapons. But yeah, that's basically it for my look at these two. Thank you very much for watching. Follow me on socials in the description below, and I will see you later.